Well, New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern is refusing to name the suspected Christchurch mosque shooter, hoping to stop copycats. Uh, but will it actually make a difference? Well, our next guest says probably not. Uh, James Allen Fox is a criminologist at Northeastern University and the author of Extreme Killing, Understanding Serial and Mass Murder. He joins me this morning from Boston. Thanks for being here, James. My pleasure. Good morning. Well, Ardern says she wants to deny the accused in this case any notoriety, uh, something he says he wants, according to his manifesto. We know this isn't the first time this issue has come up. Uh, in 2012, uh, there was that campaign called No Notoriety. It started after the mass shooting in Aurora, Colorado, to put pressure on the media not to name mass killers. But according to your research, does this really reduce the likelihood of a future attack? Well, I think it's not the name or the image that's compelling and has an impact. It's all the excess, excessive publicity. When we turn news reporting into celebrity watch, uh, consider, for example, the Las Vegas shooting, shooter. Sure, we know his name and his face, but we also know what shoe size he had, wore. He, we know what he ate before the shooting. We know what casino game he liked. He, we, we know about his uh, karaoke interests. We even know, we even have pictures of him in, from his high school yearbook on his tennis team, as if all this stuff really matters or helps us understand the crime. It doesn't. So we go overboard between identifying the killer, which is news, and glamorizing the killer, which is excessive. Uh, you also kind of say that this idea that people committing these crimes are, are doing so to become are doing so to become famous is overblown, and that's not actually the case. Uh, so, what kind of led you to that conclusion? Well, there are, <laughs> the publicity they get is a fringe benefit, sure, but it's not the primary reason why they commit this crime. They could commit the crime out of hate, uh, for revenge, sometimes for, for profit. Sure, they get some publicity in the paper, but most of them don't even uh, get a, uh, stay around long enough to uh, read the papers. They either take their own life or they're shot by the police. And even if they're not shot, they're arrested. So the publicity is not really what drives these individuals. Let me also say this. What, what people are caught, what copycats uh, are mimicking and, and influenced by, not the name, it's the act. We all know that 50 people were killed in New Zealand. And it had to do with hate and, uh, and Muslims as victims. It doesn't matter what the killer's name is or what his face looks like. That's what drives uh, like-minded individuals. That's what they admire. That's what they applaud, not the name itself. So we have these conversations, of course, a lot in newsrooms. You know, do we use the name? Do we not? How, how much reporting do we do on the killer and the victim? So what is your advice about this, given all your research? My advice is to identify the killer. Even if you didn't, it would get out there in social media anyway. The name and the face, that's fine. Uh, this, the important details of the crime. But let's not go back into the biography of the killer because that just makes him larger than life in the eyes of other people who might see him as a hero. Um, people say, well, we want to know all this stuff so we can prevent the next shooter. That's a wishful thinking. No matter how much we know about a perpetrator, that's not going to help us identify the next perpetrator. These are rare events. Fortunately, they are impossible to predict. Thank you so much for your perspective on this this morning, James. My pleasure.